Hi, in this video I'll show you how to reverse numbers in a cell or flip numbers around. So what I mean by that, let's say for example we have these numbers here in one cell and we want to flip them. So maybe 1, 2, 3 becomes 3, 2, 1, 4, 5, 6 becomes 6, 5, 4, 7, 8, 9 becomes 9, 8, 7. I'm going to put an example of a longer number here to show how we can also do it with much longer numbers. I wanted to show a way that was less formula intensive, maybe a couple more steps, but maybe hopefully a little bit easier to follow. So the basic gist of these steps is what we're going to do is we're going to separate these numbers out into different columns. So each number, each integer or each uh, digit is going to have its own cell. And after that, we're going to sort them. And then after that, we're going to save them as a text file and bring them back into Excel uh, as the reverse or flipped uh, mirror image of the original. So what I want to do first is, based on my list, I've got a list here of three numbers, but maybe there could be a list of 20 or 30. I want to find out what my maximum length of uh, this list is. So I'm going to go ahead and use the length command. So I'm, I'm going to just put in length as a header here to give me a nice little field here. And I want to find out the length, the longest length of um, these items. So that's going to be using the len command or the len function. So the len function, I'm just going to use len and then the text, len text, press enter. And that's going to tell me it has three uh, digits. So basically, if you look at the function argument, it just returns the number of characters in the string. So that's three there. So if I go ahead and double click the fill handle, it's going to copy the formula down and it tells me that the number of integers or in here is nine. So that's that's going to be the most. So that's going to give me an idea of how many columns out it should be. About nine columns is probably going to be my max. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put some headers out here that's going to count up to nine. So you can go ahead and just type one and then two and then three. And then just kind of, kind of just select it and go ahead and just drag it out till it hits nine here. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is using the columns function. Let me go ahead and delete this. Oops, let me go and just clear that. Oops, let me go ahead and clear this. Clear all. And one way, the other way to do it is to use the columns function. So that's equal columns with the S. And then the array is basically. I'm going to go ahead and type, I'm in cell C10, so I'm going to type cell C10, and then colon C10, and then what I want to do is I want to go ahead and make this a absolute cell, absolute cell reference, put the dollar signs in front of the C and then the 10 by typing or pressing the F4 key, and what happens is this columns function, what it does is it counts the amount of columns that are in this range, so from C10 to C10 is one column. Um, let me go ahead and show you an example of what happens when I copy it over. When I copy it over to D, you can see the formula change from cell C10 to D10. Because the formula over here in cell C10 didn't have the dollar signs in the second instance of C10, you don't see the dollar signs in, in here, when I copy it over, it incremented. So this went from C10 to D10 because we're in cell D10. And if I did it, uh, if I copied it over to E, let me go ahead and copy it over. Let me go ahead and click the fill handle and just drag it over here. It makes it three because what, it's, what it sees is from C10 to E10, C to E, there are uh, three columns, one, two, three. Same here for this one. From C10 to D10, there's two, one, two. So what I can do right now is I can just drag it over here and just drag it out and it will count up to nine. From C10 to K10, that's nine columns. So that's the other way to do a count. The next thing I want to do now is I want to create a formula that takes this number and breaks them out into their single digits. So the number one will be in one cell, the number two in another, and the number three in another. And you can use the mid function for that. So I'll just type equals MID and go ahead and open parentheses. This is, this is my text I'm going to reference. And the start number, I want to start with the first number. So I'm going to go ahead and reference this says because when I reference this, it's going to start with the first number here, which is here, and the second number, once I copy it over to this cell, the second number, the start number is going to be number two, which is going to be the second number. Number three is going to be the third number there, and, and number four would be the fourth number here, but there's no fourth number. But what I want to do here is I also want to make one of these references. Uh, I'm going to turn this into a mixed cell reference. Oh, I forgot for this one, this has to be a have a dollar sign in front of the A, because when I copy it down, I want to have it stick, or when I copy it across, I want to have that column stick. So I, have, I want to have the dollar sign in front. I can press uh, F4, 
to toggle it around, press it a couple times, make sure the dollar sign is in front of the A. I can also uh, put a dollar sign in front of the A by just typing uh, Shift 4, and that will put the dollar sign in front of the A. Now for C10, when I'm copying this formula across, I want to go ahead and stick with this row. So I want to put the dollar sign in front of the 10 here. So I'll go ahead and press Shift 4. That's the other way of doing it. Um, put a dollar sign in front of there. And the number of characters that I want to pull out, what the mid function does is it looks at the text. It starts at the number that you want to start at, which will be number one, because we're referencing here. And how many number of characters do we want to pull? I just want to pull one character. So I'm just going to type the number one. Uh, close the parentheses, press enter, and now it's pulled out one. If I copy this across, let me go ahead and drag this fill handle across, you can see now it's put the other digits in its separate columns or separate cells. So if I go over here, you'll see that the reference is still A11. It's this particular cell. And it's looking at D10 now. So it's looking at D10, which is 2. So I want to pull the second digit out. And I only want to pull one digit. So that's 2. I want to start from the second digit. I want to only pull one. So that's going to be number 2. So the same thing happens here. Uh, I'm, I'm still referencing here in cell A11. And I want to go to E10, and which is the third. So it wants to count from 1, 2, 3. I want to just pull one digit, which is that number 1 there. So what I can do now is I can go ahead and bring this fill handle down here. It's going to copy it down. So it's going to pull out 4 here, which is the first digit. It's going to pull out 1 here, which is the first digit here. What I can do right now is I can just drag this fill handle all the way across there because uh, it'll, it'll still copy the same formula over here, but now it's going to copy it across these blanks here. So I go ahead and pull it out, and it's going to do a copy. And it'll copy that formula out, and so you see 1, 2, 3 is here, 4, 5, 6 are in their own separate cells, and this 9-digit uh, string or uh, number is spread out onto its own cells, right? Oops, I just need to spread it out one more. Wait, actually, that's okay, because this is left justified here. Just to make this a little bit easier to view, I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy the formatting of this table. We have a blue background here. I'm just going to go ahead and click the Format Painter, and let's just drag it across here so it's all blue right now. Go ahead and click that cell, copy the format, do the Format Painter, or copy the format here, and just drag it amongst these cells here. And so I've not got a nice little grid here. So once I have my uh, grid laid out here. I want to take from this count here in 1 to 9, control C to copy, and we'll go into another sheet. And what I want to do is I want to go ahead and paste special. And the reason why I want to use paste special, there's two things I want to do with it. First thing, I want to just copy the values. I don't want to copy those formulas. I just want to copy the values. And the next thing I want to do is I want to transpose it. So I want to I want to swap it. So instead of having 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 going across, I want to have it go down and the other values would be copied correspondingly. So once I have values and transpose, I'll go ahead and click OK. And now you'll notice that it's transposed them. So uh, th in this instance, it was going across here like that. But now it's going down. So once this is, uh, this is done that way, I want to resort this. So instead of having it go 1 to 9, I want to have it go 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So this is all selected now. I'm going to go ahead and go under Sort and Filter, go to Custom Sort and then sort by column A, and I want to go from largest to smallest. So I'll we'll click OK there, and now I've got my 9876543321, and I've got this now. Now, all I need to do is just copy the numbers that I have. I want to do now, what I want to do now is I want to retranspose re it again. So I'm going to go ahead and select these range of cells. These are the numbers I want to swap around. Copy, go to sheet 3, and then just go ahead and transpose. So I'm going to go to paste, and this is the transpose command icon. You can see when you hover it over it, it tells you transpose. And basically right now, I've got my numbers that are transposed. So 1, 2, 3 well, is 3, 2, 1 now. Uh, 4, 5, 6 is 6, 5, 4. But the thing is, it doesn't reside in one cell. So there's a couple more things I want to do. I want to go ahead and select these range of cells, uh, copy it, and then I'm going to bring up a text editor. I'm just going to go ahead and bring up Notepad. Once I have Notepad available, I'm going to go ahead and just paste uh, my copied range here. So I'm going to, once I paste that, I'm going to go ahead and just save it now. And I'm going to just save it as a test. Save it on the desktop. Just call it test. And then sit, make sure I save it as a text document. Go ahead and click save. I'll go ahead and close that now. And now I just need to do is open up that text document. Just press Control O to open. And then go ahead and find 
the document. So here's my test document. And make sure that you select the appropriate uh, text file and we can go ahead and click on that and click open. And now it's going to ask us how we want to open it. So we can just go ahead and select delimited, click next. And we don't need any delimiters because basically it's all going to be in one uh, cell or in one column. So I'll go ahead and click next. And you can see this is kind of a preview for you. And it's uh, not separated out. It's all going to be one column. When I click finish, you'll see that now it's all one. It's all in one cell. So we have our list of uh, numbers here on one cell that now have been reversed or flipped. Now one thing to also notice is if we're copying this bunch of uh, numbers into a text file or something else, this probably would be fine. But if we're going to use these numbers and we want Excel to see them as, as numbers, we need to do uh, one more thing. The way that Excel sees numbers versus text is with text, Excel left aligns it. With numbers, Excel right aligns it. So right now it's left aligned, so it's telling us that this is text. And also, what you might notice is if you click into the formula bar, we have all these extra spaces there. So that's probably another reason why, reason why it thinks it's text. So we want to clean that up. So to clean that up, we can use the function called clean. Let me go ahead and tab that to uh, open up that parentheses and just select that and press enter. And now if you go into cell, let me go ahead. Actually, let me just go ahead and just uh, copy it down. And then I'm going to go ahead and copy this and then paste it as values. I don't want that formula there anymore. So I, once I paste it as values, I go ahead and select this command here. It's going to, that formula disappears and now it's a value. And also look, the spaces have disappeared. And if I click on each one of them, if I click on each one of them, that it will write a line. Now there's a couple ways that we can make these values in the cell numbers instead of text. And I'll show you one way. We can just go ahead and copy this cell go back to the home, copy, and then select this column and go under paste and go into paste special and just add. We'll just add. So basically we're adding zero. And once you perform a mathematical function on a cell that has numbers that are being seen as text, it's going to turn it into numbers or, or it's going to write a line. Excel will start to see them as numbers instead of text. So once I click OK, you should notice that now the numbers have right aligned to the cell. If I double click it to auto fit, you'll see these numbers. Uh, they are now numbers. They're not. They're no longer text. Not seen as text because these are left aligned here. These and these these are text, but these are right aligned as these are numbers. So that's the way that we can flip or reverse numbers around in a list here um, without using VBA or without using a, a long formula. Uh, you might see those kind of formulas over on the web, but I just want to kind of show you a way that we can do it a little bit without formulas. Maybe there's a couple more steps involved, but at least you don't have to write out a long formula for it. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.